Are you totally different when it comes to sex and copulation? Have you judged yourself out of receiving pleasure? Have you judged yourself into receiving pleasure in certain ways and excluded other ways? Would you like to know more about what else is possible with bodies? Would you like to create confidence in the bedroom and beyond? How has your sex life or lack of it affected other areas of your life? Everyone has the potency to be a sexual superhero. Get ready to listen, sense, and play with the sexualness that is you. Now, here is the host of The Pleasure Zone, pleasure diva and body whisperer, Milica Yelenich. Good evening, sweet pleasure seekers. Guess what? You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choice Network. And I'm your host, Melissa Jelinek, and I'm so happy to have you guys here tonight. We have a great topic. We're going to be talking about the hunter and the hunted in relationships, probably throwing in some of the gatherer while we're at it. Uh, it's actually hunting season up in the north woods where I live, more like the east woods. But in Ontario, Canada right now, hunting season has officially begun. I think it was the other day. And uh, it's kind of an interesting season to be uh, and especially as a vegetarian, I find that like even in my home, in my own safe environment, um, in the woods that surround my home, I actually have 45 acres that surround my home. And every once in a while, like this morning, I woke up um, to gunshots. Actually, I didn't wake up to them. It was a few hours later. But, you know, hearing random gunshots is, is an always an interesting thing. You know, it's not like I live in some kind of L.A. hood. But when you hear the gunshots going off, you're reminded of the hunter and the hunter energy and the hunter-gatherer times, you know. So when I was thinking about um, the show, I was also thinking about how how we in our lives play these roles as hunter-gatherer and hunter and the hunt in our relationships. Because if there's a hunter, there's also the prey. And, you know, how does that in relationships and how have over time as roles have been changing in society in general, have those roles affected us and how have those roles affected relationships and the way we approach uh, relationships. So it's interesting because a lot of um, people who are seeking relationships right now are either seeking them out as the role of the hunter or they are seeking to be the hunted or the prey. So Play with that for a minute for yourself and just like as a curiosity, are you more of a hunter? And I'm not going to explain that to you right now. I just want you to get the energy of that. Like when I ask you are if you're a hunter, does that feel uh, light and true to you? Does that feel like something that, yeah, you know what, I am a hunter? Uh, does it feel more light and true that you are the prey? Or does it feel more light that maybe you're the prey or you are a gatherer? Or maybe you're both the prey and the gatherer? Maybe you're neither. What if you're both the hunter in your relationship? How does that work? What if you're both the gatherer? How does that work? You know, with our changing roles in society over the last, especially 50 years, um, you know, you might find that there there are different ways that we are approaching relationships and sex. And one of those is that we're really, really confused. And I think I just scared my husband as he left the bedroom from the show he, actually just before the show i was telling him i'm like you actually qualify as a hunter darling and he's like huh he was kind of you could tell he was kind of a little chuffed by that so that was cute <laughs> and um there's so many qualities of the hunter that he actually has um but i was pretty sure i was the hunter but i'm becoming and becoming more aware of the willingness to be received as uh, and to receive him as the hunter and to be more of the prey and to be more of uh, in the gatherer mode. So we will talk about those and there are different you know, points of view on that out there. And I have a few different articles I'll refer to you guys for uh, that you can check out as well. I uh, definitely won't read them word for word for you because I know that most of you know how to read. And if you don't, I would be willing to read it to you word for word or teach you how to read. That's no sweat. Um, so one of the articles I was reading is from Psychology Today. And it was actually, um, I just did a keyword search for hunter-gatherer exploring your sexual approach. It was actually written, um, the article was written by uh, Randy Gunther, who has a Ph.D., 
and she writes about early sexual compatibility does not necessarily predict relationship uh, success. So hunter or gather exploring your sexual approach style. She has actually a pretty cool little test in here um, to find out you are more of a hunter gatherer. So it's something kind of fun to play with just so that we can get a sense for you while we talk about this in the show. How do you identify more? You can just feel light about it. Are you the hunter or are you the gatherer? But if you're one of those people who likes these little tests, here's a fun little test for you. So um, there's going to be six questions. So ready? Get yourself a pen and paper. I should have warned you as soon as the show started. I've never done one of the answer questions things on the show. But let's grab your pen and pencil or paper or get an app out on your phone that you can write this. So um, so for this, you answer with numbers, 4, 3, 2, and 1. 4 is most of the time, 3 is sometimes, 2 is occasionally, and 1 is never. And if you have a partner, you might be curious to do this just from your point of view of your partner as well. It won't be accurate to their point of view of them, but it'll be accurate to uh, your point of view of them. So let's play with this. Remember, number four is most of the time, three is some of the time, two is occasionally, and one is never. So number one, the question is, when you seek out a new partner, is your par primary goal to capture, satisfy, and move on? Cool. So you can answer with four as most of the time, three as some of the time, two as occasionally, or one as never. Uh, the question again was, when you seek out a new partner, is your primary goal to capture, satisfy, and move on? Cool. So number two, is sexual attraction your main reason for seeking a new partner? So remember your four, three, two, and one. Most of the time, all the way down to never. Do you present yourself as a person primarily interested in getting into sex quickly? Is lust and passion your main focus when you meet someone? Do you naturally find that sustained relationships often don't hold your interest? Are you comfortable with sequential relationships as long as they are initially sexually exciting? So once you've added up your scores, um, according to to Dr. Was it Randy? Uh, yeah, Dr. Randy. How perfect is that for a name for somebody talking about sex? Dr. Randy Gunther. So... <laughs> So add up your scores. If you have between 12 and 16, it probably means you are primarily a sexual hunter. And the lower your score gets, uh, the closer you are to um, to being a user. Or, you know, as your score lowers, you may be changing your sexual desires and um, into different phase of your life. And it might change even in your life as you get older. Uh, you know, you might have felt that way. You might have been a real sexual hunter when you were younger. It might have changed. It might be reversed. You might have been a bit of a, more of a gatherer and then you switched and changed that up uh, later on in your life. So let's take the approach on gatherer as well. So remember, four is most of the time. Three is some of the time, two is occasionally, and one is never. And we have another six questions for you on this. When you contemplate a new relationship, search for other dimensions besides sexual attraction. So again, four is most of the time. Three is some of the time. Two is occasionally, and one is never. Again, number one, the question was, when you contemplate a new relationship, do you search for other dimensions besides sexual attraction? Do you let your new partner know early on that you are interested in commitment? Are you likely to get to know your partner before you get into a sexual relationship? Even if you are intensely sexually attracted to a new partner, do you tell him or her that you would only stay in the relationship if there were more dimensions? Can you resist a committed sexual hunter if he or she is a great package? Do you seek the advice of trusted friends before you get sexually involved with a new partner? So again, add up your scores, and if you get between 12 and 16, probably you're primarily committed or commitment-oriented um, and that you're more of a gatherer. Even when the initial sex is satisfying in and of itself. So, And then as that score gets lower, you're probably getting closer and closer to being a hunter. 
So some people might have like fully, fully like, you know, 16 or more on some of these things, um, which is pretty intense. You could even have 24 because it's bam, bam, bam for all of you. So what often does happen though, is that sometimes hunters present themselves as possible commitment oriented um, and then gatherers are just kind of confused by that. You know, gatherers, I think my my um, awareness is that gatherers have a pretty good awareness. Sorry, I didn't know you couldn't keep up. We can do that again because I was trying to, um, I was trying to go slow, but maybe I was going too, too fast. Oh, you don't have to make notes on this. I will put that in. Um, I will put that test. I will actually just uh, put the link to that in here for you guys so that you can go and find it. And we can put that, we'll put that uh, link to test from psychology today into um, into the chat by our choices network. You'll actually see it where, where the episode is. So we will have that available for you guys. And I'm just going to get that link so that we can make sure that you guys can have that. So there you go. Awesome. And so it's pretty um it's a pretty clear test. It's a pretty simple test. I mean, there's always going to be, with any kind of psychological test, there's always going to be nuances. But this is a real basic kind of uh, grasp at it. Right? So so when you look at some of the hunter, the hunt specs, and you look at a, a hunter in general, um, so I'm looking at the people who hunt in my end. They certainly have certain... Um, personality traits, I suppose, actually in line at Tim Hortons, which I don't go to Tim Hortons very often. And today it was kind of like, hey, we have 10 extra minutes before school. Let's go to Tim Hortons. And my daughter is like, really? We're going to Tim Hortons? It's like gold in our house to get to go to Tim Hortons. So so we went to, t- not that we don't have the money for it. It's just not a, it's not a priority. <laughs> so so we went to Timpsons and there were all the guys in line wearing their, their um, either they were working construction, or some of them were working construction, but some of them were out hunting. And I tell you, it was funny because there were, there was like at least five men in Tim Hortons getting ready to go out hunting. But first they went to Hortons gathering. <laughs> so they were off at Tim Hortons gathering up their coffee and donuts and sandwiches. It was pretty cute and pretty funny. And one of the things I could hear one of the guys going was, well, you know, I got this job and it's only going to be like one or two days of work and the rest of the days my bosses are off hunting. So, you know, sorry, out here we call it hunting. So my bosses are going to be out hunting at the hunting cabin, at the hunt cabin. So off they go and he says, well, you know, I'm probably just going to go out hunting myself, you know, might as well go out hunting. It's like when in doubt, go out hunting. And there's a whole persona attitude and it's amazing actually to live in this uh neck of the woods of Ontario when it is hunting season the women as gatherers are so funny and they don't even probably are not even aware they're doing this the men go out hunting sometimes the women go out hunting too but it's not as common the men will go out hunting sometimes they'll take their young lads them as they would refer to them taking the young lad hunting with me to the hunting cabin and uh, the women will gather and have, like, some pretty outrageous parties. Generally, this time of year is one of my busiest times of year for for um, private parties in this area. Sex parties, sex toys. So I'm going to be having some sex toys parties, which is pretty funny uh, in and of itself. The so women are gathering their sex toys. The men are out hunting. The men are not available for sex, so the women are going to find it some other way. And I swear, probably the chances of them using the sex toys the rest of the year are pretty slim, but they are going to use them during hunting season. And God bless hunting season for that, because it keeps sex toys business alive. Thanks, hunting season. And it's just really funny to watch the men get really jazzed up about hunting. Like, they're murdering things, and they're so excited about it. Uh, I have an interesting point of view on um, hunting being that I've spent a majority of my life being sympathetic towards the cause of animals and animals being killed and then a good chunk of my life being vegetarian as well. Um, uh, But now I'm also at a place where I really have no point of view about it and I see a bigger picture. Um, And I actually have a friend, her name is Susie Godsey. Uh, She actually does some great... um, 
she has great information about animals and she tells a fabulous story about a friend of hers who is a hunter. And I'm actually going to save that story till after the break um, about conscious hunting. And I think it has a fabulous relation to uh, conscious hunting for men in relationships as well. So we're actually going to head off to a commercial break. I just want to remind you that you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. My name is Amelia Tzijalanić, and we will be right back after this commercial break. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow your to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melissa every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MilicaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back, sweet pleasure seekers. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. So for those of you who are joining me just now, you might have heard just, or you might have just heard before break that I'd like to tell you guys a little story about conscious hunting. This is actually from a friend of mine, Susie Godsey, who tells the story really well, and I, I might, you know, just turn it into a pile of shite, but I'll do my best to tell it um, accurately. So Susie is an animal whisperer um, of many sorts. She communicates with animals uh, really amazingly. Um, You can actually look her up. She has a website, susiegodsey.com. But uh, one of the things she does talk about in some of her classes is um, because a lot of people get very pathetic towards the animals who are being hunted. And she said, you know, there is a way that you can actually be a very conscious hunter. And natives um, have a very conscious way of hunting. They communicate with the animals when we talk about natives, I mean like aboriginals of Canada and, and the U.S., so the aboriginal people uh, have a much more uh, conscious way of thing than um, the guys I met at Tim Hortons, for sure. So, But can you become a conscious hunter? For sure you can. Um, part of that is to communicate with the animals. And here's the story, um, as I try and recount it from Susie, which is, that she has a friend who is actually considers himself a conscious hunter. And before he goes out hunting, he actually communicates with the animal. So if it's, for example, deer season, he'll communicate with the deer and say, whoever would like me to contribute to them leaving their body and whoever would like for me to honor their body by eating it or whatever he does with it. And he would really like... He... So... Sorry, I just got distracted. Uh, so he he is a missing hunter, and what he does is he actually communicates, right? So he asks the question of the animals, and then when 
the animals will actually appear for him, right? So if he's asking the deer um, or whatever season it is, if they would like him to, uh, say, for example, to, for him to consume them, to eat them or whatever, they will, um, they have this crazy energy agreement and they will appear for him. And, you know, it was always working out for him. He'd actually like create designated spots and he'd be like, okay, if you would like me to, um, you know, kill you or whatever, if you'd like me to take your body, eat it, whatever he does with them, uh, show up at this spot at this time on this day and I'll be there and I will kill you. And every time he would show up, there would be an animal. And one day, he was actually sleeping in his tent, and he completely forgot uh, about his agreement with one of the animals. And there, he heard a noise outside of his tent, and he woke up to a deer in his face, opening his tent. There was a deer in his face, and he was like, oh. And there was this, like, peace in the deer's, like, energy, and it was just, like, so, so much. And he said, wow. I'm so sorry that I missed our appointment. Uh, you know, he was like an hour late. I'm so sorry that I missed our appointment. Um, is it okay with you if we do it now? And he got like a yes. He And he pulled out his gun and he shot the deer. Or it was a bow and arrow. Anyway, he basically killed it and the animal didn't move. And I don't know if you've ever hunted in your life or if you've been around wild animals of any sort. They're incredibly aware. They're so incredibly aware that when you near them, they will move. Um, I was actually um, chasing a snake off of the road yesterday so he wouldn't get run over by a car. And I had to be the energy of threatening to him so that he would run. Because I, I was getting closer to them to him. He was going to let me pick him up, but I really didn't want to touch him because I, I don't really know snakes very well. And and my daughter was there, and she's like, Mom, you could get him. And I was like, okay, okay, I won't do this in front of you. So... I tried chasing it. It wouldn't budge. And then I was like, okay, what energy do I require being to be like a hunter and scary? And so I just brought on this like, rah, and I got like super ferocious. And I scared the snake to the side of the road. Um, and it was funny because my daughter's like, wow, that was really nice of you to scare him so now he can live. I'm like, you know what? It's weird but true. Um, I scared him or whatever. I chased him off the side of the road so he could live. It's funny. Sometimes we don't give scaring something as a kindness, but it was actually to save its life. So, <laughs> so you know, that animal showed up for this this uh, this gentleman, and he killed it, and he had gratitude for it, and he was so thankful for it, and he his uh, reports on it is there's just so much peace and space, and um and the animals, like tra la la animals don't actually have a point of view about being hunted. It's somewhere along the way we came, you know, we as people developed past our reptilian amygdala. Um, we developed past that. And then all of a sudden we have these other feelings and emotions that create things like guilt. And we start to adopt these ideas that that's wrong and bad and terrible and blah, blah, blah. And even in relationship, we have those points of view. So I want to just look at that story of the conscious hunter and how that could actually relate to, for example, relationships. So, ladies and gentlemen out there, if you are the hunter or if you are the hunted, are you willing to listen to the communication going on energetically? So as a hunter, if you're seeking a relationship, would you be willing to put out the communication energetically? It's kind of like an energetic ask. And if you need to learn how to ask, you should definitely connect with my friend Christine McIver who has a hundred days of up your ask by the end you've had a thousand asks in your life in different areas of your life if you're ready to have your mind blown and your world open up definitely connect with Christine McIver on you can either get her on her website inspiredchoices.ca or connect with her um, through the radio station actually she is CEO so you can connect with her learn how to ask but this is actually kind of an energy of ask as well so what you do is you kind of put it out there you're like okay so, if you're a man attracted to women or if you're a man attracted to men, whatever it is, just put it out there. We'll go with men attracted to women. It's an easy um, one for me to kind of just stick with for the story. So, as a man, you're seeking women. If you get really conscious and really present with your body, and this is kind of like what the hunter does, the conscious hunter who attracts the deer who shot at his tent to be killed. So, 
bring in that energy. So just be present, bring in the energy of what it is that you would like to hunt. So for him, he was hunting that time. So what would you like to hunt? Are you hunting a relationship for, um, you know, one-time sex? Are you hunting a real, like something of a long-term relationship? What are you actually hunting? So get really clear on what you are hunting. What is the hunting season for you? So now that you're aware of what your hunting season is, put out the communication. So whoever and whatever is out there that matches that, you know, one night and long-term relationship, meet me at such and such a location in such and such a time. Now, this might not occur the first time because you might be doing it out of doubt or you might be doing it out of to prove me wrong. Or Cool, you can just try and prove me wrong all you like, but I bet the more you do it, the more these things will show up. It's a muscle that you practice. It's a muscle that you practice with awareness and it's a muscle that you practice with perceiving the energy of what's truly light or are you like projecting stuff. So so gather what's light and what's fun and then get the location, agree on this meeting. It's all energetic communication. It's kind of mind-blowing. It's kind of faster than a text you've ever sent in your life. And just see and play with it because if you can do it with animals, you can do it with people. But the chances are, it's got to be somebody who can actually perceive your message um, and be willing to follow that, right? So you might be seeking people who are far more conscious than unconscious. So you might end up in different kinds of relationships than you were expecting. But if you're looking for unconsciousness, you can just go to your local bar and see what comes up. So that's just another option too. <laughs> and so how else can you be a conscious Hunter. How can you be a conscious hunted? You know, when you're actually having the messages sent out, how do you how do you perceive them? Do you you know where is your body like tugging you in different directions? Do you follow that? Um, and I have a friend who is in access consciousness. She's a three body process facilitator, and she tells a great story about her body pulling her around. Uh, she lives in Sweden, and she was walking around the city that she lives in. And she was saying one day that her body just kept on pulling her around and around corners and different streets. And then eventually her body led her right to the spot where the person she was dating was making out with somebody else. And she was like, huh, look at you, body. So smart. And she'd been questioning the relationship. Um, and her body actually led her to find the truth. So she followed her body to get her the information that she wanted, and it tugged her in different directions. So your body might actually tug you in the direction of um, the relationship you're seeking as well. So follow those tugs. If you've been asking questions about it, like who would be fun to play with, who would be fun to have, um, you know, depends on the kind of relationship you're trying to develop. Um, and asking for that and see where your body tugs you in that direction. Bodies are so smart. Bodies are the ones having the relationship. You, the being, are connected with everyone and everything. And our bodies are the ones that are having these sort of almost like uh, groupings, like family relationship, friendship relationship, um, business relationships, all these things that are kind of groupings that actually look like separations, but ultimately our beings are all all connected. So follow those because our bodies are freaking smart and they will, um, as the hunted, your body will um, pull you in different directions to be pulled to the energy of the hunter as well that you might match what you're looking for. So you can have fun with that on an energetic level, which is a completely different um, approach than some of the articles that I was reading. But definitely um, we have the capacity to work all of us have the capacity to work with it on an energetic level as well as like a logical, pragmatic level, which we will talk about some pragmatics of the hunter and the gatherer as well. So I just want to remind you guys that you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. I'm your host, Melitza Yelenich, and we will be heading off to a commercial break. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself 
yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you're far greater than you've ever given yourself credit for? What if it's time to know the gift and the contribution you are to the world and to like yourself a lot more? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question and everything changed for me. Asking questions opens doors to infinite possibilities. And it's not about finding the answer. It's about being the question, always. What I'm inviting you to step into is something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Gandhi, Picasso, and Aristotle all knew to be true. What if no question is too big or too small? What if anything is possible for you? What if together we could create a kinder, gentler, happier world? Is now the time? Go to beinguclass.com and sign up for a free video series, My Gift to You. Beinguclass.com What if you, truly being you, are the gift and change this world requires? beinguclass.com This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melissa Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MelissaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome back to the Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Melita Allen. And tonight, uh, tonight, we're talking about the hunter and the hunted uh, and the gathers and all that jazz as well. One of the articles I read uh, was pretty interesting. Um, there was a lot of information to tell us something very, very simple, which was quite poignant. Um, so it was written by Dr. Dennis W. Nader, Nader, N-E-D-E-R. He has a website called uh, beingaman.com, and he's got uh, something on uh, BAM TV called beingaman.tv. So um, he actually writes a lot about sex and relationships from a male's perspective, he said, you know, a lot of articles out there about the hunter-gatherer are from women's perspectives, and he said, really, let's keep it simple. And one of his very simple things that he says is that, and I love this line, he's like, the answer is so simple, he says, it's going to make your head spin, um, that when you are actually, when you're actually being hunted, or say, if you're hoping to get some guy on the hunt or on the chase, you're already too late in the game. He says that for once the guy has found you, the hunt is over, and now he's in for the kill. So he says it's just that simple. You hunt and you kill, and that is a very basic primal uh, capacity. And I think that was kind of a very just clear cut on his on his behalf, I know a lot of people argue with his point of view, but I like wanted to present that because I think it's a very clear-cut point of view about um, even the art of hunting is you hunt and you kill. You hunt, you find your prey, you kill it. Hunting is actually the action of seeking it out and then you kill. So, you know, part of that is that he says that you know, women are trying to continually get men to keep hunting when they already had the guy. And because when you keep it really, really simple, is to actually be available and interested and engaging. And that is going to make it way easier because if apparently, if we ladies out there, if we're looking for heterosexual relationships or something, um, this really, I think, pertains to, like, his writings pertain mostly to heterosexual relationships um, and pertain to other relationships, but it's, I think there's a kind of a, a whole other area to look at with the hunter and the hunted with um, the LG, LGBTQ kind of category of 
of relationships and different ways of perceiving relationships that aren't maybe as uh, old school as as the hunter gatherer kind of relationship. So, yeah, what do I want to bring it down to here? I want to bring it down to something really simple. So, what he says essentially to wrap up everything that he said. I said his okay. Uh, it's okay. I'm so confused. It's really cute. So what uh, what basically Dr. Nader says is that if a man has found you, you have been hunted as women. And if you have been hunted, the man is ready for the kill. Stop playing games and just become available, interesting and interested in the relationship. He said that if there's like other prey that is easier to attain, you, definitely a man will lose his attention and attraction, which there are. And so, and, and he talks about like men are even getting confused about what they want because the roles are so confused and reversed and, um, and reversed in a way that it's like, we're not in the hunter gatherer roles anymore. So it's like, we don't really know how to behave and what to do. Um, there's actually a great show on cbc.ca for those of you who are in Canada and can get it. Um, it's called, I think it's called uh, Back in Time for Dinner. And it goes through the family rules from the 1940s to the 1990s. Um, how really, until 1970s, there wasn't really much uh, overall change in uh, domestic roles. There was still the hunter-gatherer kind of um, roles going on. So really, we're talking about a really new dynamic. Women might become the hunters and men are becoming the gatherers. And what does that look like? Like, how do you have a relationship with a man who is a gatherer? Could be kind of interesting. Well, there was an interesting article that was actually written about that. And I will kind of give you guys a a glimpse into that. So this was written by Katie Edwards. It's on EliteDaily.com. And you don't have to write all these. These are just information for you. If you want a link, I will put the link also so you can read the reference to this. These are like my um, footnotes, my footnote references. They'll be available on the site uh, as well. They'll be available on Inspired Choices Network for you to check out these links. You can check out the articles I'm referring to. And so on Elite Daily, there is uh, a woman, uh, Katie Edwards, talking. Uh, no, I could be wrong. It's anyway. It's written by Katie Edwards, and basically, it's talking about how um, there are two kinds of ten difference between a hundred ten differences between a hunter and gatherer um, between like, verbal communication, manipulation, self image, vulnerability, the power struggle, confidence, honesty external influence, defensiveness, and security. So it's pretty um, it's pretty interesting. I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit of information on this. So according to this article, verbal communication difference is that the hunter in this, the hunter is a man whose words are always backed by intent and purpose. The gatherer is a man who always says the right thing, but his words are devoid of meaning. I think the thing about this article is it kind of puts down men who could be gatherers. <laughs> like I think there's a bias in this article, but it's still interesting. Uh, number two, population. The hunter pursues a woman who interests him without the need for games. He understands dating is a two-way street. The gatherer gives a little of himself to a woman, but expects a lot in return. He wants to be a woman's whole world, but only wants her to be a slice of his. Under self-image, the hunter is confident. The gatherer is driven by insecurity, vulnerability. The hunter is honest about his feelings with the woman and acts on them without the fear of rejection. The gatherer cloaks his true feelings for a difference. The power struggle. The hunter is assertive. He understands an equal amount of effort is required from both the man and the woman for a relationship to flourish. The gatherer would rather lose a woman than risk not having the upper hand in a relationship. Confidence. The hunter knows who he is and doesn't seek superficial attention from outside sources. 
The gatherer craves validation from everyone, even if that means it is at the expense of your feelings. Honesty. The hunter is honest with you, even if it's something you don't want to hear. The gatherer would rather lie than risk coming across as a bad guy. External influence. The hunter stands on his own two feet, and friends or acquaintances don't easily sway him. The gatherer always the gatherer allows the influence of others to sway his decisions. Defensiveness. The hunter defends you. He would never let anyone ill of you in public or private. When he finds a woman he loves, he protects her. The gatherer is likely to allow your name to be brought up in a negative context. After all, it's all about fitting in. Security. The hunter physically works towards creating a future with you, not just with his words, but also through his actions. He understands his strength is in his actions, not words. He wouldn't risk losing you over being afraid to act on something he feels. The gatherer works on creating a future with you through his words. Only. He says things to you he doesn't fulfill, hoping it will be enough to bind you to him with the promise of what could be. So, in this context, whether a man is a hunter or gatherer has nothing to do with his physical being and everything to do with his internal attributes. So, just know, like, if you meet a hunter, you'll notice how much easier it is to date him. And I found that was, even though I thought I was just hooking up with my husband and didn't know that I was with a hunter at first, uh, I actually married a hunter. He has uh, every single one of the traits, hunter, according to this article, which is cute, which is why right before we had this show, I was like, wow, honey, you're a hunter. He's like, yeah. <laughs> and it's really, it is actually really sweet because the other day uh, I was about to go out for a walk with my daughter and uh, hunting season started again like there's different hunting different things being hunted all the time but i think it's deer now or something and i was about to go out in the woods on sunday and uh, mike said it was eva and i were just about heading out and my son is relatively deaf actually and everybody's noticing it more and more and for some reason he could hear that he could hear that i said let's go for a walk in the woods that i said to Ziva, even though he was across the house he was heading off to work because he's been working seven days a week for the last few years, pretty much. And he got in, uh, got in his truck, drove down the road, gave us a call on the phone, and said, "Okay, if you guys are planning on going um, for a walk, I really need you to wear orange, all the orange stuff that you know, so that they find you, so that you're not, you don't get shot at, right?" He was like super concerned. Um, so Ziva, my daughter, had answered the phone, and she was like, oh, isn't that, he's so concerned about us. And it's funny, because so many other things he doesn't hear, but if it comes to our safety, or if it comes to, like, Ziva's health and welfare, he, he can hear a pin drop, and that would be, like, he's, like, so on it, so concerned. Uh, which is, like, a super freaking, I find that, like, a super freaking sex tribute that he has that. <laughs> so... Yay to Mikey. You're a hunter, mister. I'm just going to celebrate that. Yay. Um, which is interesting because if if you are with a hunter, then it's like, enter, basically, it's funny because for him, in our relationship, it's like, and I said that to him, I'm like, so once you get the relationship, the hunt is done, right? And he's like, yeah, the hunt's done. And that's exactly how he reacts in relationship. It's like, now that the hunt is done, I don't have to hunt you anymore. I've hunted you, and now that's it. And then I married you. That was the kill. Went for the kill. That was the marriage. And now we're good. <laughs> so, so it's a uh, it's really interesting perspective. And it's an interesting way that we really haven't developed that much further past our hunter-gatherer um, traits. There's still something that is very attractive um, to find in a partner, if you're somebody who's a gatherer, that it's very attractive to find a hunter. And for hunters to find gatherers, it seems to work. It seems to work uh, in a really functional, pragmatic way. So if you find yourself being a hunter, maybe you require being with a gatherer. 
If you find yourself being a gatherer, maybe you require a hunter. Sometimes, you know, I'm not really sure about that, but I wonder what it's like to have two hunters or two gatherers at once and how they, how that, those relationship dynamics work or don't work. But that's something to go with. Anyway, we're going to have more conversations about the hunter and the hunted in relationships. We're actually uh, going to come back where you are listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. And I'm your host, Melian C. Alanich, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow your to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melissa every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. What if you really do change molecules by your interaction with them? What if the change you've been looking for is right before your eyes? What if the uncomfortableness that comes with difference could be fun? What if the closed-minded people of the world no longer determined our world? What if gratitude trumps judgment every time? What if your kindness healed the world? What if the earth is asking for your help? And what if you had the resources to give it? This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Picasso, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Aristotle all knew to be true. Hi, my name is Dane here. Thirteen years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. What if there are no dumb questions, or any question too large? What if you being you are the gift and the change this world requires? Is now the time? For more questions to create a change in your world, sign up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. My gift to you, beingyouclass.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melissa Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MelissaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. And I'm your host, Millie T. Yelenich. And tonight we are talking about the hunter and the hunted and relationships and how does that work. And I'm going to bring it down to a really, um, a really fundamental, basic human physiology level of a man as hunter. I have, an, I have another link that we will also have in the, um, in the, uh, available in the podcast, uh, so when you actually click on that, you'll be able to find the, the links I've been mentioning that you can do the um, the survey. You can find the 10 types this is between uh, two, the hunter and the gatherer of men. And then here's another one that I have for you guys, which I find is a really great article as well about men's hormones. I'm going to give you guys a real brief on this because we only have a few minutes left. But I think it's really important to talk about how the – how actually – what occurs in a man's body when he's in hunting mode. So the number one thing is that testosterone is a man's winning sex hormone. It actually kicks in a lot during hunting, um, gives men the confidence, uh, a lot of confidence actually. And testosterone has specific actions within the body um, to give you like a feeling of mental and physical stamina for men, muscle growth and sexual performance. Um, and it actually kind of chops in, like it jumps in during during the energy of the hunt, going on the hunt, whether it's in relationship or actually hunting, 
that whole energy of testosterone jumps in, which women find attractive, which is why if you are truly in the hunt mode, men, and you are truly seeking relationship and you have that, uh, that like testosterone high, uh, you know, it's a pheromone gets released and women will find it and smell it or men will find it and smell it, whatever you're looking for. There is, there is definitely a, a response for bodies that occurs. Another hormone that kicks in with hunting is the human growth hormone. Um, it's the main hormone responsible for growth, in, in particular bone development, connective tissue, and a lot of other things. Um, it's actually secreted by the pituitary in the brain, which is also part of the endocrine. It creates growth by stimulation of insulin growth factor. Um, the, this hormone in particular along with testosterone is anabolic, meaning that it actually creates growth in great amounts. So um, you will feel like your body is growing, like strengthening and growing by when you're like lifting things, you get the HGH kicks in, your muscles get stronger. Um, it's it's uh, When you sleep in total darkness, you actually will have the HGH home kick in. So remember to get some darkness to have that hormone kick in. I'm going to just try and get the rest in. So cortisol is a stress uh, hormone that's actually secreted by the adrenals. And so to give you guys a brief on that, it's actually something that uh, it works also with testosterone and the growth hormone and adrenaline during exercise. So it increases fat burning. Um, ultimately, what all of these hormones do is get your body so excited during um, during hunt that you actually feel like going home and getting it on. One of the articles that I read was like, yeah, yeah, guys, you go out for the hunt and your body's so pumped and excited for being sure um, that it also has, you have all of these things running in you. You have all these hormones running in you that um, that are also survival. They're really base hormones for survival and thrival of, of basic, like, of of men's lives, right? So there's a drive that kicks in to actually thrive and be alive. And when you have a desire to thrive and be alive and have humanity thrive and be alive, ironically, after killing something, there is a, a desire to also create bettas. So um, some actually guys feel crazy horny after going hunting. They have this like like testosterone kicking in like mad and uh, all these other hormones, uh, adrenaline kicking in, like all these things kicking in that just get them uh, really, really excited and riled up. So um, if you are not interested in hunting animals, which I'm not a fan of, but, you know, I'm not totally against if that's something you require doing in this life, you get those same uh, hormones by actually being the hunter in relationships and getting excited, getting your hormones going, getting your body to a place where those hormones are activated and alive and going. So sleeping in dark spaces, getting your body excited, getting the testosterone moving, getting um, all kinds of exercise going. So thank you guys for listening to this program. I'm so grateful for you. Remember to find those links in the um, in the episode when you search for it and have an awesome, awesome week. Remember that you're listening to The Pleasure Zone and that makes you a pleasure seeker. So stay tuned in and turned on as always because that's what you choose. So you guys have a great week. Till next week. Thank you for choosing to listen to The Pleasure Zone. Melissa Yelenich will return next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.